Hello everybody, um, today I'll be telling you about um, a project I've been um, running for the past two years as part of my job at uh, the CCMC. Um, it was called The Unspoken and shortly I'll tell you why. Um, so first I want to start um, with giving you a little bit of um, background um, in terms of LGBTI rights um, in Cyprus. Um, so, I mean, you probably have realized that we're not living in a very um, open-minded and progressive country. Um, and a new chapter began in terms of LGBTI rights um, in 1993 when a gay rights activist, Alekos Modinos, took the Republic of Cyprus to European Court of Human Rights. And he won. Um, and of course, after years of political debate and opposition, um, Homosexuality between, well, basically homosexuality, when we say homosexuality in this context, we mean consensual um, sex acts between two males um, was decriminalized. Um, and this was a, um, a law in the penal code um, remaining from the British colonial era in Cyprus. Um, so the same law existed in the north, in the Turkish Cypriot community. Um, Unfortunately, it didn't become a part of the public agenda until 2007, 2008, when um, the first LGBTI rights group was established called um, Initiative Against Homophobia, and they drafted a legislation um, which was brought into the parliament in 2011, I think. Um, and then finally, in January 2014, um, homosexuality was decriminalized. Now, obviously, changing the law does not automatically change people's minds and hearts. Um, we still live in a very conservative society, um, so a lot of awareness raising activities needed to be done. We realized that people knew, to some extent, um, what LGBTI rights meant and what human rights meant, um, but it wasn't really acknowledged. It wasn't a part of the public agenda because especially talking for the Turkish Cypriot community, um, which is under the influence of Turkey, um, politically and socially, um, and we're under embargoes and everything, and there's the Cyprus problem, which is the biggest problem of all. And these sorts of issues were never really a priority um, for the politicians or for the society at large. So, Basically, we called it an elephant in the room. Knowing the existence, but continuing to ignore that these people exist and they have rights. It's pretty simple when you think about it, but for some reason, it just was not, the acknowledgement was not there. And people did not really speak about it. So, um, as CCMC, um, we partnered with Queer Cypress Association and uh, Thompson Foundation based in the UK um, to bring this elephant out of the room, to acknowledge this elephant. Um, so we called our project Unspoken to represent um, the community that is unspoken about and the issues. Um, and I need to mention that this, this, um, this project was carried out um, in the north, so it was targeting um, the Turkey Cypriot community. Um, the project aims to, well, aim to increase awareness in the Turkey Cypriot community and particularly within various key sectors such as media, education, law and health on the rights of the LGBTI community. Um, and we've also placed special emphasis on media as we, well, basically two of the main partners of the project were media organizations and we obviously believe in the power of uh, media in setting the public agenda and um, creating dialogue and opening up people's minds, basically. So, and when I talk about media, even though I work at a community media organization, we mostly target at mainstream media in this project. And it was funded by the EU under a civil society in action program. When, when we structured the project, we put, obviously it was a civil society project, and we put um, media and participation in the center. We wanted people engaged, we wanted people strengthened, empowered, and we wanted to work closely with the media 
um, in order to change their ways, in order to improve um, the way LGBTI people are represented and the way their stories are covered. So um, our objectives um, were increasing the visibility and public awareness of LGBTI rights, um, encouraging inclusive reporting and rights-based journalism, and enhancing the capacity of the LGBTI community in order to do more effective advocacy. I prepared a very colorful presentation for you. So we've, uh, we've clustered um, the activities into two groups. Um, one was an awareness raising campaign, which I'll tell you more in a little bit, and the other one was focusing solely on media. So one of the things we've done is conducting um, a large scale survey um, on, in two stages, um, which the results will be um, published very soon. Um, if you follow us on Facebook uh, or get in touch with me, I'll be happy to pass them on to you. Um, this was basically to understand um, where we stand as a society and what factors um, influence how people approach these issues. So one would be age. How do younger people compare to older people in terms of um, being open? in terms or how um, contact influences their opinions. Another thing we did was um, organizing nine seminars and we've made sure to include um, civil society organizations and professional associations in, in co-organizing these seminars and we've targeted specific professional groups um, from key sectors. So we've done um, seminars with let's say primary school teachers, organizing it with the teachers union in order to address um, bullying at schools. We've partnered with the Chamber of Doctors to address um, medical professionals on how to deal with um, issues regarding LGBTI rights in the hospitals, in the clinics, how to properly um, pay attention to, to your patients. Um, We've also done seminars on queer art. Um, we've worked with journalists again in, terms, um, in order to encourage rights-based approach to journalism. We've been um, closely watching two um, printed and two online newspapers which had the highest um, selling rates and highest reading rates. Um, which again, this, this report um, will be published very soon. It's getting ready to be um, printed as we speak. Um, just to sum up, basically what we're seeing is seemingly a lot of good coverage. Um, but when you look deeper, what you realize is most of that coverage is comprised of the press releases um, that we send we as in the project or civil society organizations and they just reprint them or they take news from international media. Obviously there's an effort um, in order to improve the representation and they're working hard but we see that that's getting better towards the end of the two years um, but most of the positive coverage was based on reprinting or republishing what was already sent. I put some positive um, examples to be uplifting. Um, so on this, on this side here, what you see is a column and um, where people write about their problems to this lady who's a psychologist and she responds with advice. And she used to, we've actually kind of had a fight with her a couple of times um, because people would ask about you know, oh my god, my boyfriend is gay, oh my god, my kid is a lesbian, what am I going to do? And she would say all these homophobic things. Um, and here, some lady wrote to her saying, I think my husband is cheating on me with a man, what am I going to do? And she's saying, allow him the space to talk, this has nothing to do with you, this is something he may have discovered now, and that's his reality, and let him be, which we thought was very cute.
We worked with um, journalists. Um, we worked with journalists um, in order to improve coverage, and we've provided. Um, oh, you really can't see that. That's fine. It's not that important. I'll tell you about it. <laughs> we've engaged. Um, five or six um, big media outlets, including TVs and newspapers, um, and the newsrooms and editors in order to talk about the perspectives and how you could cover um, a story about the LGBTI community properly and how not to offend people, what is the right terminology. Um, that, was, that was a very hard um, process for us because journalists are not very open to change, unfortunately. Um, and this mostly has a lot to do with their working conditions and they're not really allowed to reflect their own personal views and what they see is right. Um, they honestly do not have the time. So we've had a lot of problems trying to get them in one room and trying to get them to open up, but I think um, it was worth it. We've also worked with um, civil society activists, um, mainly from LGBTI groups, again in three two-day sessions. Um, to improve their skills in advocacy and campaigning, how do you deal with the mainstream media, how to write a press release. Soon we'll be publishing a resource guide and toolkit for media professionals, which will include principles on ethical journalism, it will include the right terminology to use, um, what kind of stories can be covered, how do you go beyond just posting a picture of the pride, how do you um, get in touch with the professionals and the groups and to allow people to have their own voices. We've also held um, monthly thematic discussions on a variety of topics. This is just some examples. Um, we've, we've discussed um, issues like anti-militarism and LGBTI, um, dating apps, masculinities, um, being vegan and how that relates to LGBTI, um, emotional violence in relationships, intersex issues and how to organize um, non-normative relationships, etc. We've also conducted capacity building um, workshops mainly focused on LGBTI folks. Um, we've talked about campaigning, sexuality and disabilities, sustainable activism, transfeminism, etc. As, as the Unspoken Project, we've also sent um, some LGBTI activists to conferences abroad in order to expand the organization's network so that they can function better in a more sustainable way um, when the funding finishes. Um, we've organized social events, parties, um, performances for specific days like the uh, Idaho bit which is the day against homophobia um, which now as we celebrate uh, as the pride and transgender day of remembrance a few months ago we've organized a very large-scale conference which I'm proud to say a huge amount of people attended which is really unheard of in the north um, we've had thematic panel discussions on media. Um, we've discussed the findings of the project, the survey, the media monitoring report and everything. We've talked about health, feminism, queer theory, and we've had speakers um, from Turkey, from Cyprus, from the North and the South, from Lebanon, from Malta, UK. Um, and I've put up some nice pictures. We've had about 200 people attending um, for both days. And now the fun part. Um, we, within, within these two years, we've envisioned um, doing three rounds of um, billboards, which we thought would be great um, because as activists, we generally do not have the resources to get, their, to get our messages out in the public space uh, on a really large scale. And um, since EU was paying, we thought this was a really great opportunity. Um, so like I said, three rounds um, 
five cities, all the regions covered. And even though we said 10, 15, we've actually done more. Um, but I'll, today I'll focus on the first one. So um, this is Turkish, I'll explain that in a bit. Um, we actually thought a lot about um, how to use this opportunity, what to write on these billboards, because even though we're, we're activists and we've been working on this issue and we've been reaching people, this was really the, the biggest outreach that we were gonna do. So we thought, okay, let's not be apologetic. We're not asking for anybody's approval, right? But let's not be provocative, because that doesn't fly with Cypriots. So we thought, let's, as, as a really community-oriented country where your community could be like your family and the lady that lives next door and their grandkids, you know, you have your neighborhood family and then you go to the supermarket, you know the vendors, that's another community. Okay, so the lady that lives next door to your parents' house where they occasionally have coffee, if you were to say something to her, if you were to initiate a discussion with her about LGBTI rights and or solely your existence, which most people are against, where would you start? We said, okay, lady, I'm gay. It's pretty simple. So we wrote in, a, in the Turkish Cypriot dialect, Anti Mediha, which is a common old lady name, I'm gay. Uh, Uncle Kamin, I'm a lesbian. This blew out of proportion even more than we've expected. Um, we've, we, we were flooded with um, positive messages, um, solidarity messages from um, international organizations, um, some really great media coverage. But of course, that wasn't it. Because when you bring out such an issue to public spheres, oh my god, really? Okay, I have two minutes, I'll be really fast. Um, when you write gay and lesbian in huge fonts and put it on really busy intersections, people, people react. And by the way, we're talking about a Cypriot community where everybody is pretty much really conservative but they really like to think that they're progressive and they're really modern and you know now now that we're european we're all good and everybody's free and the biggest um thing that we kept seeing was why did you have no one's telling you anything you can do what you want and in your own house no one's saying anything to you why did you have to uh, rub it in our faces by putting it on the street am i screaming that i'm a heterosexual why are you screaming that you're gay? Now, obviously, this was also fun for us because we realized that we're actually challenging this hegemonic status quo and this heteronormativity because as a heterosexual person, you don't need to scream it in my face because the whole world, the whole society is constructed around your heterosexuality. But as a gay person, yes, I do have to scream that out loud. And when you bring that out to the public sphere, when you take it from the private to the public, um, we've actually stirred a lot of debate. Um, this was the topical issue for a few weeks on the papers. Um, and as expected, some vandalism occurred. Here, this is, this is actually very interesting. This is the one that says, Uncle Camille, I'm, I'm a lesbian. Dave, and please also take note, oh, you can't really see that. It's actually color coordinated. Um, they crossed out the lesbian with a red spray paint and wrote, I am a guy on yellow. And on this one, they spray painted it over with yellow, so it's carefully thought out. Uh, and wrote, I'm a lady, in red. Which was also pretty great because we could um, pinpoint and say that yes, we do live in a homophobic and transphobic society, and this is exactly why we're doing this, and this is exactly why we're gonna keep doing it. And I think I'm running out of time. Thank you.